I just wanted to do a quick video on the PDMS2. It's a standardized outcome measure I use quite frequently in the home health setting for pediatrics. It applies to kiddos zero months of age all the way to six years of age. So it's got a pretty wide range. Uh, after that, I normally use something like the BOT2. But one of the reasons why I especially like the PDMS2 is because it accounts for prematurity. So you can do an adjusted age and Essentially, the examiner's booklet is divided into four sections, and your administration is each of the four sections. Let's say on eval day, I'm just focused on this box here, first administration. The kiddo is uh, chronological age, so they've been out of the womb for 12 months, and they're premature by two months. So their adjusted age would be 10, or sorry, 12 minus 2 gives you 10. So um, you are scoring this kiddo on this outcome measure as a 10 month old. So that's pretty important to, to remember. It only keeps adjusting until the age of two years. After that, if you are still treating the kiddo, maybe you, you do your eval and they're like one month away from two and then <laughs> A couple months later, you do a reassessment using this and their score is way different. The reason being that you no longer scale for that, um, that adjusted age. So it, it might throw you for a loop at first. But let's say we are doing raw scores here. Or we're trying to find ours. Um, normally, I'm actually going to write in standard score slash raw score slash percent slash age equivalents. So one of the things I actually really like to do is instead of just supplying the raw score on each of these blanks, I do standard score, raw score, percentile, and age equivalent. All here. So it's really easy for me to refer back to at a later date. And also when I go into my EMR, it's all in one spot, super easy to transfer over. So uh, one thing I would highly recommend to do Let's go into the packet, and it starts with reflexes, stationary, locomotion. Oh, each of those subtests. So as a physical therapist with my kiddos, what I'm looking at are reflexes, stationary, locomotion, and object manipulation. If the kiddo doesn't have an occupational therapist on board and they might need one, I'll go ahead and do grasping and visual motor integration as well. But if OT is already going to be on board or if they've already been on board most likely the grasping and visual motor integration are subtests they've already done so I can ignore those the three tests that I will do will depend on the child's current age and that is adjusted so if the kid is 11 months or younger I will account for reflexes if the kid is 12 months or older I'm looking at object manipulation the two I always do for kids, regardless of age, is stationary and locomotion. So, reflexes, 11 months and under, object manipulation, 12 months and over. So, for this kid, their adjusted age was 10 months, so I'll be doing subtests for reflex, stationary, and locomotion. Going into our packet, let's say... We're, I'm going to use the stationary. It's got a lot more items, so it'll be easier to use arbitrary values for. Let's say the kid is 10 months, so I'll flip on over to the 10 month section. Now this kid is, um, he's been referred to physical therapy for likely developmental delays, so I'm going to actually backtrack a couple months or a couple item numbers. And here we're starting at six months. So this is item number 10. Let's just say they got a two. And for the following two items, they also got a two. So they have three twos scored in a row. And let's say after this, they don't receive another two. It's a one or a zero. We can then say that items 10, 11, and 12 comprise their basal score. Um, so we here at item number 12 will give all of the before items two points. So 12 times two, the raw score so far is going to be 24. After this one, let's say we test the following items and we get um, 
1, 0, 1, and 0, 0, 0. So he acquired two more points to add on to his raw score. He's got 26 total. Um, and we had three zeros in a row afterwards. So the three zeros in a row comprise his ceiling. After he gets three zeros in a row, we don't have to administer any more of the items for that subtest. So we can go ahead and go on to our appendix sections. Now, just for easy numbers, and so I can remember later, let's say for reflexes, his raw score was a 10. We said stationary, his raw score was a 26. And locomotion will give him a raw score of 10 as well. That's actually going to be a really, really low score for locomotion in this kid, but we'll just go with it. Um, looking over to Appendix A, Table A, uh, that's going to help us convert our subtest raw scores to percentiles and standard scores. So for this one, I flipped over to the page of 10 months. Now, we're going to go down to reflexes. The raw score was a 10, so we're going to swipe over to the percentile rank column. This kiddo is in the 16th percentile uh, for his age, and, or for given his score, and his standard score is a 7. So what I will do is then write uh, those values on the front of this form here. We now have the standard score of a 7, raw score of a 10, percentile 16, and we don't have the age equivalency yet, but we'll get there. So standard score, we said 7. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down before I forget. And stationary, we said 26. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way down to 26. His percentile rank is 9. And his uh, standard score is a 6. OK, so I'll write those values on the cover and standard score of a 6. OK, I will then move on over because we want to find the age equivalency next. So I will go to Appendix C, Table C, and this will help us convert raw scores to age equivalents. His reflexes raw score was a 10, so we go down. Let me get closer to the camera. Reflexes was a 10, so age equivalent wise, he is performing like a six month old for his reflexes. For stationary, he scored a 26. He is uh, performing like a six month old in that regard as well. For a locomotion, we said 10. So he is, let's see, two months. Um, he is performing like a two month old in locomotion. So for those values, I'll go ahead and write them in here, age equivalency. Um, and now I want to find the sum of the standard scores and convert that to a, a quotient. So I did, oops, I'm going to go to Appendix B, Table B, and that here will let us go down to, let's see, three gross motor subtests. Again, if OT was on or not on board and not planning to be on board and the kid kind of seemed like they might need it, I might be doing those other two subtests and then I'd be using this column. But for, for this example, I only used um, reflexes, stationary, and locomotion. So the sum of those scores are what I'm going to look for. I'm going to go all the way to the page that has his sum we said was, let's see, what was his? <laughs> Going back to this, I wrote two of the numbers, seven and a six, locomotion was a standard score of a two. So seven plus six plus two, 15, yes. Uh, so 15 is the sum of his standard scores given the three motor subtests. So what I'll do is I'll go down until I find 15 here. And again, this is Appendix B, Table B. Uh, right here is 15. If I go on over, given the sum of his scores, he is in the one percentile rank. If I go on over to his quotient, he is 66 for the quotient. 
Where that's important is I will then go on over to the earlier page. Doo, 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 doo. On page 32, there's table 4.3, and that's a, um, a descriptive page telling us what his quotient score of 66 might entail. So right here, he falls under the very poor classification. Um, so that's also given the bell-shaped distribution of 2.34. I'll go ahead and include those on my electronic write-up for insurance. And uh, also I do want to go over, so a page before that, on page 31, there is a different table that looks pretty similar, and this is for standard scores and kind of what those mean. So this, this fella had a 2, a 7, and a 6. So all of those were below average um, for the 7 and the 6, and then the 2 was a very poor. You could choose to include those as well in your write-up, but you don't have to. Um, when remembering that um, some kiddos may perform very well on this particular outcome measure as a result of the test not assessing facets like asymmetries or quality of movement. It just is pretty much, can you do this? Um, some kiddos with hemi neglect or perhaps hemiplegia will score kind of high and it doesn't account for the whole other side of their body that they're not using. So uh, take that into account and also if, if a kid does score unusually high but still should qualify for physical therapy, definitely include uh, PDMS to used but um, score higher than uh, anticipated as a result of failure to assess for asymmetries and quality of movement, blah 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 blah. Uh, other than that, that should get you good to go um, as you get more and more comfortable for using the PDMS2 in your own practice.